Mate, and welcome to Capture Industry with me, Judy. And today we're touring Fang's 100% Sustainable Island. And we're going to start with some basic ones like what makes an island 100% sustainable? And the easy answer is all your res raw resources need to come in via a boat, and any waste products you have either need to be burnt or they need to be shipped out via boat as well. There is no mining, there is no dumping. If you can achieve that, you've reached 100% sustainability. You should be able to run the save forever without anything filling up, overflowing, just just AFK forever, which also means nuclear power is um off the list, uh, which might, you know, lead you to the thing that we we might notice in front of us that I'm sure you've been counting whilst I've been talking. That is um the 3,300 roughly solar panels, which leads to uh, I believe it's 172 megawatts worth of power on a sunny day, but on a heavy rain day, it's just 33 megawatts worth of power. Which also means that you're going to find batteries, and we'll get to the battery system in just a minute. But yes, uh, this is actually the second 100% sustainable base I've toured. I already toured Zinc's previously, which I'll link up in the top right hand corner. Also be down in the comment section pinned in the comment section below i do recommend you check out that video afterwards because both bases have have some similarities but they also have things that are very very different one of them actually being the contract choices between fang's base this one and and zinc's base previously i also should mention fang um, when we spoke i asked him how many times or how many playthroughs of captain history he'd done and he told me this is his seventh playthrough it's the third time on this particular map being the golden peak the one i'm playing in my let's play and he said it was the most difficult map out of all the, the maps in Captain History. Well, excluding the DLC. I don't believe he has the DLC. Trust me to pick the most difficult map for my Let's Play, which I do recommend if you guys haven't seen yet, you, you should probably check that out. We're not quite at rocket launching yet, but we're getting very, very close. And um, my island is... um. I wouldn't say larger, um, but definitely more complex. More complex is probably the best way of putting it. Uh, with that out of the way, let's talk about um, actually the island, the contracts, and what he's doing. Now, one thing I do want to mention, uh, Fang has, it looks like he's gone through the list of contracts, and he, he's played with all of them. Uh, if we bring up the contract list very quickly, we can see what contracts he actually has active. And you'll notice that there's a lot of contracts here that are no longer active, but we have the ship remnants in front of us. So um, he's using consumer electronics for quartz, uh, household appliances for copper ore, also has diesel for gold ore, uh, vehicle parts for crude oil, uh, servers for iron ore, slag for sour water, construction parts too for limestone, and cement for coal, which is... um. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Um, when I looked at Zinc's base previously, he did what I have done is solar cells for quartz. And I'm going to use that as an example because it's quick and easy. And you might notice of the quartz you bring in, 12, well, 2,160, 720 of it is going back out for the contract. Fang, on the other hand, has chosen to use consumer electronics, which uses a whole bunch of other materials. It's also much harder to make. And you're only losing 250 of the quartz you bring in. You're also bringing in slightly more quartz. Um, same goes for iron ore. Iron ore is, you know, you're only losing, what, 24 steel? Uh, for 2002, uh, 2,520 iron ore, compared to the alternative contract, which is Vehicle Pass 2, which needs about 1,000 iron ore to make 2,000, well, to, needs a 1,000, rough, a little bit less, a little bit less than 1,000 iron ore, um, to trade for 2,000 iron ore. So, yeah, a, a very, very big difference in the contract choices. Anyway, uh, with that out of the way, we're going to talk about, well, here, here, right here, we have a poor ship, which used to be coal for limestone. Yes. And then right beside it used to be glass for coal. So he was exporting glass right here to bring in coal to then export the coal, well, some of the coal straight back out to bring in limestone. As you might notice, these are completely paused. Which is funny because he has um a lot of a lot of materials that have been wasted is probably the best way of putting it uh because every cargo ship that you have sitting around costs 600 construction parts the only thing i can assume is he's had these builds up and running and then as he's gone for sustainability he started pausing and removing different builds and then obviously just had a whole bunch of ships hanging around doing nothing yes uh next up we have water we have the water contract right here uh next up we have oil so oil let's start with well well the simple things are uh, the patent pending jetty pump and dump system uh very very good if you want to smack your pumps and your dumps as close as possible which also comes with a whole bunch of electric boilers um 
when all your power is coming from solar, technically power is free. So the fact you're using electric boilers, which are not really, really not efficient, like really, really not efficient, if the power is free, then they technically become super, super efficient. So he's using uh, electric boilers right here to both create the steam for oil itself, also create the steam for the desal plants to then create uh, the water to run the steam. The other thing we might notice is there's going to be a lot of trucks driving around. So Fang played things very, very different to what you would see in a normal automation game. Rather than using a lot of uh, belts to move things around, he's used trucks like a lot of trucks. Basically what he's done is only when the trucks are busy. So when the trucks are busy, then he goes through and he looks at what the trucks are spending most of their time doing and then removes that, that single item off the list and automates it with a belt. So right here, we're doing uh, vehicle parts for crude oil, which means trucks are constantly bringing over vehicle parts to put in this box to then trade it out for crude oil. You know, it's only 200 parts every five months, which means, you know, it's it's three truckloads, three truckloads every five months. It's not too bad, but yeah, just, just a small difference, a, a minor difference. It's something that I find a little bit unique, a little bit um, different to what I've seen previously. Uh, right beside that happened to be a gold box because he was obviously previously to doing the vehicle parts, was doing the gold for oil contract. As for oil itself, um, we have a fairly simple distillation stage one, stage two, stage three, which is going to give him naphtha, fuel gas, also diesel and heavy oil sour water. Uh, the naphtha comes straight into the plastic machines where he makes majority of his plastic, actually all of his plastic right here. There is a belt taking plastic off to somewhere else but a lot of the other plastic is actually delivered via trucks uh, from this particular box any excess naphtha gets turned straight into diesel with some well via some hydrogen and also gives him some fuel gas all the heavy oil gets turned into diesel and fuel gas as well finally the any excess fuel gas gets turned into hydrogen uh lastly any excess excess fuel gas also gets converted into diesel so his stop gap is diesel everything gets turned into diesel it can get turned to other things beforehand, but you know, the system will eventually back up on diesel. On top of that, uh, he does have a couple of these chemical plants making graphite. We're going to find these dotted all over the map. Um, rather than bringing all the CO2 to one like central location and then optimizing the exact amount of chemical plants required to run the exact amount of CO2 he's producing, he's just got lots of little builds just, just taking any carbon dioxide that is available, if there's enough available, uh, and making graphite and then dumping the graphite in the box, at which point the trucks, again, once again, take it away and, you know, shove it into all the smelters because he's running all Arc Furnace Mark IIs, which are all running on graphite uh, rather than coal. Over here, we have all the sour water processing. This is sour water both from the oil, also from the uh, contracts, 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 also from the slag to sour water contract. Uh, and he's running all his sour water right here. All the sulfur um, gets put in a giant, giant container for being taken elsewhere. Anything excess gets run into a couple of machines, get converted in slag. Slag then goes back to the start and gets turned back into more sour water via the contract. Uh, as for all the ammonia, there are two buckets of ammonia because you do need ammonia for, uh, well, ammonia, you can turn it into antibiotics. So it's going to be required for medical too. Uh, also, ammonia can be turned into fertilizer. Uh, funnily enough, he's not turning any of this into fertilizer. He's taking all the ammonia and he's splitting out the nitrogen and the hydrogen. Um, the nitrogen being vented, the hydrogen he's actually saving up. There is a giant tank of hydrogen here, which he's using for a different process. Uh, finally, uh, whilst we're here, we also have some coal with some chlorine being processed into extra graphite to feed all the many, many arc furnaces. Uh, next up, we have the old nuclear reactor. It has been decommissioned and he didn't quite finish filling the first spent fuel storage. So that's something. Um, but yes, he has uh, 120 megawatts right here of backup power, backup power. So this is running off a couple of uh, electric boilers and they pump into some low pressure turbines. Well, two high pressure turbines, Mark 1s, uh, and then the, 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 the low pressure steam comes into uh, this little guy and gets parked in here and run a rain. Okay, rain, this doesn't run. It's heavy rain. Heavy rain is the only time this kicks in. And yes, uh, they just turn, well, they just charge up flywheels charge up flywheels is giant batteries 
and eventually that's going down ah oh, under rain under rain we do have these guys running so when it's raining uh some of these kick in to actually pull power off well off the grid i guess the way of putting it um yes so it discharges some of the flywheel batteries uh to then create some power and then as soon as we go back to sunny weather uh, they charge back up the flywheel so uh that's the power plant over here we have uh sour water for slag contract uh, beside that we have the consumer electronics for copper next one we have is service for iron uh, we might notice that the consumer electronics are how household appliances household appliances are brought in by fire belt yet servers are not servers are trucked in uh main reason being it is 96 servers and you are small modules so small modules being oh and you're on reduce so you're on a six month turnaround for the iron ore plus another four months for the modules to unload so it's 10 months every 10 months it needs to bring in 96 servers which is going to be two trucks so a uh, one truck every five months it's it sort of makes sense when you say it like that to not bother putting on a belt but you know there's there's a couple of processes around here that i would have put on a belt and he's chosen not to uh next up we have uh rock import he obviously has to import from the world map uh rock he has this fully upgraded level 16 although he's only running it at level 10 uh you're gonna need rock for a couple of processes in the game that actually require rock and have no substitute also anything that needs sand you need to take the rock grind it gravel gravel and then in uh, gets reground in sand also we have the uh, sawmill gotta remember on any difficulty level the sawmill the rock mine the sulfur mine and the water mine are all infinite all the other mines are on captain difficulty and above are finite yes it's on the sailor difficulty sailor difficulty uh all the mines are technically infinite so uh we have the rock mine being imported right here right beside that if we continue around we have again a superseded being turned off glass for a uh, coal contract he does have still one glass smelter running which is making some glass that gets shipped off on this belt and the excess gets put into a box for other uses for other things yes uh also we should talk about the main production center so um let's start over here over here we have uh all the exhaust processing for most of the smelting yeah maybe even all the smelting um these guys are processing the exhaust he does have an overflow uh should he not be able to process all the exhaust which it looks like that is the case currently and all the co2 comes over here and gets turned into graphite which again is used to run the smelters uh on top of that he has all the steam processing from every arc furnace can i find arc furnace yes arc furnaces output low pressure steam as do the exhaust scrubbers so all of that steam is being processed right here and can be converted into water water goes where water does go i'm not going to get into where water goes water is probably one of the most complicated things in captive industry uh does use some of the brine right here to create salt also creates some chlorine again you might notice these are just available for the trucks to pick them up uh all the excess brine comes out here into again more patent pending jetty pump and dump systems yes and again one's turned off because i guess he doesn't need it even though the pipe's full i don't know uh okay uh, let's start with the main production center. So we have two recycling centers. We just have two of them running, uh, which produce iron scrap, copper scrap, gold scrap, and broken glass. Gold goes here. Trucks pick this up. They dispose of it uh, wherever gold goes, which we'll get to shortly. Uh, glass comes up here. Again, trucks can pick this up should they need to, but most of the glass actually runs into these two arc furnaces, get converted straight into glass which then goes into household goods. So household goods are made from recycled glass. They're also made from recycled steel. So again, he has uh, iron scrap coming in here, being converted straight to steel. Steel then gets split into two, one of them coming over here to make the household goods with wood being brought in via truck. And the rest of steel comes out here and goes into, well, a couple of other lines. We'll get to those shortly. Uh, next up, we have copper. We only have three copper smelters running. The fourth one's being paused. And again, this is fed completely off recyclable goods. It doesn't have any new items coming in. And the copper comes down here and is priority fed into the main copper build. All right, uh, on to new materials. So new materials wise, um 
let's do this one first. So right here, we've got rock being brought in to be converted into sand. Sand is needed for copper smelting. It's also needed for concrete down the bottom right hand corner. Uh, concrete also, he's chosen to use slag crushed rather than using gravel. Now, obviously you're already right here. You're making gravel uh, from rock to get, they could get converted into sand. He's chosen instead to use the slag, which I guess, well, I guess, I can definitely tell you now that I've actually stopped and thought about it, is a great move. Um, in my case, and I really recommend this, like early game, mid game, if you're not going for 100% sustainability, you're always mining up materials. You're always mining up rock. Use your rock. Simplify the process. Grind up your rock locally uh, to make sand. And at the same time, use that, that uh, gravel to then run your concrete mixes. But when you're shooting for 100% sustainability, Obviously, you're making slag, and the only thing you're doing with slag is you're, well, you're outputting it, you're, you're shipping it out for sour water, which is handy, but you don't want to ship it out for sour water to then have to import more rock to account for what you could have used the slag for. So that's what he's done. He's used slag because it makes more sense when shooting for 100% sustainability. All right, as for copper itself, we have uh, obviously copper ore being crushed into copper ore crushed, which then runs into the smelters. Now... You may you notice the extensive use of molten balances here. This does not prove that molten balances actually have a use. Uh, this proves that, as Fang said, um, a lot of these smelters are from early game, and he just didn't have enough room. So actually thank me for my recent couple of videos that I posted on upgradable smelters, where you can build them in place and then upgrade them as you go. I will actually link that up in the top right hand corner as well. Also pinned down in the pinned comments below, because having smelters I can put down early game with just truck deliveries, and then as the game progresses, just upgrade them in place without having to rip down and rebuild all the belts and the pipes and everything else. Such a game changer. Such a game changer. Uh, so yes, he found himself uh, out of room. So we end up with a couple of molten shuttles bringing the copper out to here. And then he put down the copper processing to give him the impure copper. And then finally the electrolysis machine to get pure copper. And again, ran out of room, so we end up with more over here. Yeah, uh, we can see space is always a concern. Uh, the other thing we're going to find is he is definitely a fan of manifold-type bases. So we have all the copper going to storage. Also, a whole pile of rubber storage right below it uh, that finally gets turned to electronics. As for the rubber itself, because he has prioritized his uh, oil build to just output diesel, obviously he's using diesel to make rubber. It's not the most efficient recipe, but because he's simplified the oil process by choosing to use diesel and, and having diesel as the stopgap, then obviously it makes sense to use diesel as part of the making of rubber. Uh, okay, continuing along, we have iron ore being crushed into iron ore crushed that then gets run into all the iron smelters. Uh, iron gets split off in a couple of different ways. So we have actual iron here, and then beside it, we have steel. So this just converts molten iron into molten steel and then doesn't have any room to actually run the cool casters to turn the molten steel into actual steel. So they end up over here. Again, just a lack of space, a lack of... um. A lack of planning to a certain extent um but i think one of the things we've definitely found with capital industry it doesn't matter how much you plan you can't plan for everything at least not this early in the game not with um mm, at least i can't the amount of hours i have in the game i still can't plan everything out in advance all right uh so we have concrete slabs we have iron we have wood obviously that gets converted in construction part one added to the electronics we made to our left which then gives him construction parts two construction parts two are picked up from here somewhere via the trucks and they're taken over to do the construction part two for limestone contracts yes uh and then finally he has construction parts three uh after he's brought in steel and then construction part three storage with the addition of electronics two to make construction parts four with a lot of construction part four storage yes all right uh let's continue around ships wise so over here we have the wood ship uh beside that we have the quartz ship now the quartz is sh uh trading in consumer electronics which, as you can see, there's a tiny little storage right here for, for consumer electronics. Just just has one or two laptops and mobile phones hanging around. Just a spare. Okay, it's like it's like raiding an Apple store. It's it's got a few spares at the back. Uh we'll do the quartz first. So quartz comes to the right, which also passes the gold for diesel contracts. So gold for diesels right here. Also, previous to that was coal for gold. 
um, which as we can see has been poor. So he's gone, he's built this one, been reasonably happy with it, not happy with it, finally decided to uh, pause that one and do this contract instead. We have gold processing right here. Also, you might notice the uranium processing was here. Again, uranium uh, processing and gold processing create toxic slurry. So he has chosen to do the two of them right beside one another because they share, you know, wastewater treatment plants with the same recipe um so i really like this idea on top of that uh there is filter medium right here which you may notice is going to be brought in via truck uh also slag output and more slag output yes uh so filter medium is actually brought in via truck which again is just just one of those things about this particular base uh also rocks brought in here goes through and gets converted into sand to run the many 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 gold smelters uh gold is used for a couple of things the main thing he's going to be using it for is um microchips we'll get to the microchips build in a minute all right uh up here we have the uh quartz processing which obviously has a lot of hydrogen because uh, he is making a lot of quartz on top of that quartz uh in arc furnace 2 is one of the ones that does require coal so we actually have the coal belt being fed in from well it comes from the right we'll get to that shortly but it makes a detour up here to make quartz all right uh quartz processing quartz comes over here Quartz is obviously running into a whole lot of silicon wafers. Uh, one to make solar panels, because he was making the mono solar panels and obviously made a few of them with three and a half thousand solar panels. Uh, also, uh, we have vehicle parts one right here and vehicle parts two, which goes in the said box, which then F11. Uh, oil is there. Uh, trucks are driving the... Oh, I think a truck just showed up. Yep, truck just showed up to pick up the vehicle parts and take it over there. Uh, below quartz, well, quartz processing output, we have PCBs. Uh, also have electronics 2. Electronics 2 pop down here and give us uh, electronics 3 with microchips. We'll find the microchips in a second. Uh, and also we have a steel import box. Actually, no. It's actually belt fed. Yeah, through... No, oh, no, no. It comes from a box. It comes from a box. I thought it was a belt there. No, it comes from a box as well to give him servers. Uh, servers are, again, being exported over there for iron. So, you know, a truck shows up. Like I said, what is it? Two trucks every five months or something. Uh, every 10 months. Every 10 months to pick up a couple of servers and take them over there and refill that contract. Uh, we also have steel being used here and plastic for our, and our electronics 3 to make our consumer electronics to then go out for the quartz contract. As for the rest of the uh, silicon and gold etc uh they're going to come up above maintenance and they're going to come up to here again many many truck deliveries and this makes our microchips i really really hope in my never next playthrough whenever that is um could be soon we'll see uh i really hope i plan out to have enough room to have 12 microchip machines side by side because although building you know three four rows of four no four rows of three 12 12 um building them you know stacked as i have in in my tutorial video but it works I, I having 12 in a row just simplifies the process so much uh, especially in my let's play when i'm up to like six rows or something five rows it seems like a lot uh yeah just having 12 in a row just makes life so much easier uh the only other thing we have over here is of course mechanical parts which are made right here um which is funnily enough off where is it uh off recycled goods um that's 100 recyclables to go into all the mechanical parts which then disappear off to do maintenance and also into vehicle parts and a number of other things all right uh right here we have maintenance so one thing you're going to notice with a lot of these 100 sustainable bases and late game bases is maintenance two generally ends up being higher than maintenance one uh that is because of the sheer number of solar panels that are required to get you enough power that you don't have to have any alternate source of power so a lot of maintenance two uh with some maintenance one and some maintenance three maintenance three is going to be required for uh where are we an arc furnace uh no that's uh maintenance two uh is going to be required for aha robotic assemblers uh mark two require maintenance three as do the data centers that are required to get you the teraflops so the decent amount of maintenance three an awful lot of maintenance too with some maintenance one thrown in on the list uh okay so that's sort of the production center spoken about there's a good amount of production here yeah there's definitely enough there's definitely enough um and yeah like i said um it doesn't matter how much you plan out 
you're probably not going to be able to plan in everything perfectly the first time. All right, next we have the captain's office. Now let's start under population. Population, we've got a couple of things. We have food saver Mark 1 and Mark 2. Uh, this means he's saving 20% plus 10%, 30%, 30% food. So the people are very skinny people, very, very, very skinny people. They don't get fed a lot. Under industrial edicts, he's, um, he's ticked every button. He's ticked every button he possibly could. We have vehicle fuel saver 1, uh, which is probably important because he has... 80 odd trucks running around um about 35 to 40 of them are active at all times or 25 25 to 40 depending on what the base is doing at that minute uh are active all the time driving around so there's an awful lot of diesel being used with vehicles just driving around on top of that there is the ship fuel saver uh can i look at fuel uh, let's turn off you, 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 and you. Uh, cargo ships are using a good amount of diesel every month. Cargo ships actually use a lot of diesel. Uh, vehicles comparison use not nearly as much. Uh, so, uh, ship fuel saver has definitely been turned on. Vehicle fuel saver one has also been turned on to save himself 15% fuel. On top of that, he has overloaded trucks a one and two. That means the trucks can carry 30% extra, which means you can carry 78 at the cost of 40% uh, extra maintenance. But you got to remember, trucks just don't require that much maintenance. They really don't require that much maintenance, so it's not that much of a cost. Uh, he does have maintenance reducer 1 and 2, which are pretty much required for any any late game and definitely any sustainable base. Uh, both maintenance reducer 1 and 2 are always required, along with recycling uh, 1, 2, 3, and 4 to give you a total of 90% recycling efficiency. On top of that, he has farming boost number 1, so that gives him 10% extra yield from farms, also 10% extra water yields. To counteract that, he also has uh, the Water Saver 1, which reduces the water consumed in settlements by 20%, and another 10% of that. So 30% water saved from farms and settlement, plus, uh, well, well, with 10% of that undone by the farming boost. Also, another one for any sustainable base is Clean Panels 1, 2, and 3 for an extra... 30% solar panel uh, power out of the solar panels. Uh, we have the vehicles depot, which has obviously been paused because, well, there's no trucks being built and all the diggy boys have been scrapped along with all the dump trucks. Uh, next up we have, um, well, we have got our next two ships, which is uh, construction parts two for limestone, which comes in right here. And then the limestone gets processed straight, processed straight into concrete and gets shipped out uh, straight, uh, well, shipped out for coal to be imported uh which also leads to a couple more processes right here we have a couple of uh electric boilers to create uh some clean water also have a couple of exhaust scrubbers right here to process the exhaust from um parts of this assembly yes uh parts of this assembly also uh the co2 that they generate comes over here and runs in these two chem plants which then gives him more graphite uh also can't can't miss the patent pending pump and dump system for you know even more seawater to run more desalinators yes uh which then comes into oh uh we should mention that the uh rotary kilns are running on fuel gas and the reason for that being is the town center town center we have the most important system uh being the poop system poop system is at 317 poop per minute and he only has two waste treatment plants doing 160 each which probably explains why he has the water saver one and two turned on because he didn't want to build another poop system. Yeah, I don't blame him. It's 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 a it's not a hard build. It's just frustrating upgrading it over and over and over. Uh, so he is processing the poop here with one single machine making filter medium, which the trucks also pick up the filter medium and take it over to do the the gold processing over there. Yep, I said he's sharing that stuff around. I'm also like towers of iron. Just he has spare iron. You know, saving it for later. Uh, okay, so we have the two poop, poop systems. Uh, they're, of course, creating sludge, which he turns into fuel gas and compost. Fuel gas comes out and runs the tower uh, statue of maintenance, save another 5% on the maintenance. Uh, the excess fuel gas comes out and runs these guys, which I like the fact that, like, you know, everything is in a very tight, self-contained system right here. It's a really good design choice. Uh, and the compost comes out here and gets turned into organic fertilizer. On top of that, he has biomass being brought in from anywhere in the map that makes biomass, along with the biomass collector, 
which then runs through all these uh, mixes to give him more compost, which gets turned into organic fertilizer, which does go to the farms. He does have some organic fertilizer, well, some fertilizer in the farms, but yes, it's the organic type, not the um, the fertilizer one, fertilizer two. Uh, on top of that, we have good old recyclables, which are traveling all the way across the map to recyclable sorting over there. And we also have uh, the rocking chairs, rocking chairs, which were made at recycling center and brought all the way back. But you might notice he's not a very kind person. Uh, he is de denied denied them access to any household goods, uh, household appliances, which means they have to wash all their clothes by hand. Uh, washing machines are a thing of the past. The last one went out of service at least 50 years ago. On top of that, uh, they don't get laptops. They don't get mobile phones. They don't have access to any access to social media, which is unfortunate because I'm going to ask them that they should really like the video, just like I'm going to ask you like in the video you should click like in the video right now uh, at the same time if you like these sort of island tours and you have an island you wish to submit hit me up hit me up on twitter hit me up on discord submit your island uh, at the same time hit the subscribe button that way if i get more submissions which I actually have another one i need to tour in just a minute you've hit the subscribe button you'll get a notification when that video goes out uh lastly we have medical two uh he's only doing medical two not medical three he could get a higher bonus out of using medical three but Medical 3 is a giant pain in the butt to make. Um, so I sort of understand that choice. Uh, across the other side of uh, the uh, the town, we have an old sulfur import boat. Uh, we have the good old The Ship. The Ship. It's been named The Ship. Uh, we also have The Shipyard, which of course always has junk in it. Uh, we have Trash Sorting. Trash Sorting is just burning it off because that's your only choice. You can't dump it in the sea. You can't export it. So your only option is to burn the stuff. Uh, lastly, we have the uranium import ship, which is paused because he's off nuclear power. Uh, and then around this side, we have food. Food is a little bit more complicated. He's not the most nicest captain out there. He feeds the people a fairly simple diet. They get potatoes, they get uh, corn, they get meat and eggs and sausages. They also get vegetables. But that's sort of about it. They do get treats occasionally, very, very occasionally. They get cake occasionally. Fruit is a rarity. It seems like they've had a bumper stock lately and they happen to have some fruit. And bread is very, very optional. Very, very, very optional. Um, and we're going to walk through some of these systems. So we have corn, obviously, coming down here. Uh, corn, if the uh, food market is full and the storage is full, Excess corn gets thrown through this uh, balancer and spat out this way. Once it's spat out this way, it comes into these two machines, which will then make snacks. And of course, they need salt plus cooking oil and plastic. So plastic comes in via truck. Salt comes in via truck, even though, well, technically it comes in from these guys. Technically. But it has the option from coming in via, via truck. Uh, also, uh, and the biomass goes into the box, which then the trucks drag over to this little container right here uh on top of that uh like i said it needs uh cooking oil cooking oil is a one machine one machine again trucks bring in the canola and it gets processed straight to cooking oil and then animal feed comes in here and cooking oil pops out over here and disappears into uh these two machines here these two machines here which are making the cakes so we have flour which is brought in via truck uh cooking oil which is brought in via pipe and the sugar, the eggs, and the fruit are all delivered by a truck. We can see truck import is actually on. And I missed what you were dropping off. Um, going to go with probably fruit, considering how full that is. So, yeah, he's, he's physically delivering all the things into this machine via truck. Um, only two out of the four, 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 five, five ingredients actually come in via some sort of automation. And having the flour being dropped here and then run on a short belt. I don't know whether you could actually count that as automation. But that's how he's chosen to run it. Which is um, both a stroke of genius and a stroke of madness. And we'll come to the, the madness and the genius part in just a second when we actually look at the farms. Uh, on this side, we have our six chicken farms. Not that many chicken farms. But like I said, he's not feeding the people a lot. So therefore, he can get away with not many chicken farms. Uh, they're obviously producing the eggs, which the trucks can pick up the eggs and take it over to there to make the cake. Uh, also producing meat, which pops out over here, which just goes straight off to the town center. Also, sausages, don't forget. Uh, the extra meat trimmings make a loop over here to make our sausages. Funnily enough, uh, the meat trimmings are, well... The meat trimmings are fed directly in, that much I understand. Uh, the meat is prioritized into the town center, and then the excess pops over here to be turned into extra meat trimmings, which, again, I understand. What I didn't understand is there's no priority here. There's no guarantee that this belt will remain empty. 
I guess technically it's going to self balance eventually. Like if this belt backs up, these two will stop running. If these two stop running, this one will run for a little while. But eventually there won't be any meat for it to have meat to make meat trimmings. Therefore, these guys have to start running chicken carcass again. Like it will self balance eventually. But I was expecting a balancer in here or, or something. Like even side loading the belts, which does work. I'm not going to go into the, to how it works, but you can side load belts to force a priority as well. No, no, just feed them both in the back of the machine and it should self balance. And if it doesn't, I'll fix it later. Seems to be Fang's attitude. And surprisingly enough, it, it works. It works with this process. It works with a lot of processes he's done. Uh, we again have salt being delivered via trucks over here. We have wheat processing. So all the wheat gets jumped in here. It gets converted into flour. Uh, also animal feed. Animal feed goes to a box. Trucks can deliver the, the animal feed to wherever the animal feed needs to go. And we also have a full box of flour. It's only if the box is full does the flour come in here and it make bread. Funnily enough, bread is flour and bread. Flour and bread is the cheapest, absolute cheapest. Uh, it creates the most food for the least amount of effort. Yes, that's probably more accurate. That's how bread works. Um, a, a little bit of wheat will feed more people than any other food type. And yet it's the lowest priority in, in Fang's base. Um, just one of those things I noticed. Okay, uh, before we get to the farms, we'll talk about very quickly about medical. Medical is very, very simple. It's all delivered via trucks. So we have sugar cane coming in here and we have biomass being picked up here. We have uh, sugar cane being processed to sugar right here. Uh, then the sugar gets processed into ethanol. Ethanol obviously gets converted into disinfectant with some plastic, which is brought in via truck along with steel. With between steel and plastic, you get medical equipment add the ethanol to the plastic get disinfectant uh, add those two together get medical supplies number one medical supplies number one gets combined with antibiotics to give you medical supplies number two again sugar is popped out right here uh gives you sugar cane gives you sugar sugar then comes over here with some uh, ammonia that's delivered from the oil build on the other side of the map and gives him all his antibiotics all the co2 from the antibiotics plus also the ethanol creation comes over here it's shoved in into a chem plant too to make more graphite to run all the arc furnaces as for oh data centers boring data centers uh yeah not much to add there okay farms this is where things get interesting now farms i, I i've done the same i've done the same in my base i have uh all my my deliveries and exports and imports down the middle okay uh he's gone with a flat belt with a u-belt then the organic fertilizer pipe and then finally the water pipe I prefer this method and um, as we can see it's much easier for me to click on i put my belts on top my pipes on the bottom never doing that again it's impossible to click on things but it's fine it's fine uh as for the farms themselves so on the right hand side um we see this as a truck import on so from here trucks can grab the veggies and take the veggies over and put them in the veggie box um which is this box uh and that's how veggies actually get delivered to the colony they also have a belt uh yes they have a belt but unfortunately because the way the belts run um the belt has priority not the box yes and unfortunately they don't have any fruit currently because well it's it's on the belt behind the veggies so they need to eat more veggies to get more fruit yep uh so we have truck import on this one uh we also have truck import uh or export rather on this one and this one you might notice is not actually plugged in at all so the trucks need to physically come here and grab the wheat plus the canola to run the canola into the cooking oil and the wheat into the the flour machines this one same story uh it has an output belt but it's been paused so the trucks need to physically come grab the material and you're growing wheat currently it's a bad example uh, on the right hand side this one truck export is off it's also blocked in by solar panels so this one is hooked into the belts it has to use the belts uh this one is making uh veggies and sugarcane we can see it's maxed out on sugarcane okay and it's relying on the trucks to come pick it up. Now, if the trucks don't pick it up, it basically rots in the field. Well, rots in the warehouse. And if it rots in the warehouse, it doesn't actually cost you anything. It doesn't force any sort of backup. One of the things I had to do in my base, because I have all the food going on many, many belts. Um, every like four farms or something is on, on their own 450 belt. And then into my food processing area, I have four belts at Mark three to all go into food processing, and I cannot have any one of them back up, which means every single every single food type needs to have an overflow 
and an overflow to the overflow and an overflow to the overflow to the overflow, so things can't back up. Uh, he Fang has instead chosen to, um, worst comes to worst, it'll rot in the field. Uh, you have truck export off. You're currently growing corn. Whether this vegetables actually gets on the belt between now and then, who knows? Worst comes to worst, it'll rot in the field and it won't cost him anything. Uh, same with this one. This one is in theory outputting, it's not blocked at all. This one has fruit as well. So this requires a truck to come over here and grab the fruit and take it over and throw it in these guys to make cake. Or no, that's not accessible. So the only place that fruit can go is which one? Uh, which one we're up to? Not that one, not that one, not that one, not that one. Mm, that one. Uh, the fruit has to get on that belt. If it can't get on that belt, it, it just rots in 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 situ. Um, same with this one. Like all, all the ones on the right have to output to the belt. The ones on the left, more often than not, things are rotting in the field. Um, like there is no way he's going to use ninety three sugarcane plus one hundred and forty nine sugarcane before. Well, this is being this is running right now. So this is going to be ready in four point six months. That's ready in five point two months. There is no way he's going to use all that in this, in this time, which means this is just going to fill up. It's just going to fill up. In fact, it's supposedly going to make 290 sugarcane. There's only storage in here for 209. It's definitely going to rot in the field. Uh, this one has canola. Again, there's 26 here. Uh, actually, it's plenty of wheat currently. Uh, and this one's got sugarcane as well. Uh, it's got another 62 sugarcane. It only stores 200. Yeah, th there's going to be a certain amount of food rotting in the field. And it's just... It, it, it's somewhere between ingenious and sanity because, like I said, sugar, uh, in my case, I have to have sugar. Whoa, wrong one. I want to go that one. Uh, sugar. So I have to take all my sugar can out of the fields. And then I have to process it into sugar. And then after it's processed the sugar, I can prioritize it out, which I've done in a cake and in antibiotics, that anything left over has to go into ethanol. And then because I can't let ethanol back up, I have to use ethanol to make, you know, disinfectant. And I also use it to make plastic. And then anything else, well, any excess ethanol I have to do something with. So currently I have it combining with cooking oil to make diesel. But if I don't have enough cooking oil and the tank gets full and my sugar backs up, then I have a problem. And and that's one of the things I've had to I've had to combat in my own let's play because I don't let anything back up. If I just set these guys to truck export and no belt, then I could just have the stuff rot in the field for all I cared and it wouldn't make an ounce of a difference. Um, like you just picked up oh the 26 canola because obviously they could process the canola finally uh but this is like this is nine months away from finishing another lot of sugar cane it's still full of sugar cane there's sugar cane everywhere he, he's not going to use it all uh okay so I, I found the farms very very fascinating uh the other farms i found fascinating were these ones now these ones are potatoes they just do potatoes uh and what he's done is he's um Engineered the potato system. Engineered the potato system is probably the best way of putting it. So, uh, potatoes take three months to cook, uh, cook, uh, to plant. But these are in basic farms. Basic farms requiring 10 people, no maintenance whatsoever, and have no rotation. So they actually have a fertility penalty, which means on a good day, he gets about 34, 32, rather than the original 64 he should get. Uh, yeah, about 31, 32, uh, because the equilibrium for the fertility is so low. But what actually happens is he plants potatoes, and then, well, the soil has to have some water, just just a drop of water. One drop of water is all required to plant potatoes. And then after they've been planted, if there's no rain, the crops, the potatoes take three months to dry out. They also take three months to finish growing. So no matter what, he's in a situation where every three months, potatoes come out. So we're waiting for rain, and all we need is one drop of rain, and then we can plant the potatoes. So we need about a soil level of a uh, soil water level of about five about five or six just to get the planting happening so we're just gonna fast forward come on we just need the tiny oh 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 tiniest bit of rain tiniest bit of rain so we've been planted now these are gonna be ready in 2.6 months we're also gonna see they they're out of water they're gonna survive up to three months without water and we're gonna see the estimate for the the, the crop is 32 34 to start with because the fertility actually went up of the soil because it was completely dry but now that we've got the potatoes planted it in theory would go down but because there's no water it's not growing so the fertility goes up now we have some rain so the fertility goes down again, but because they got rain, we don't have a rain penalty. We don't have a dry soil penalty. 
So the estimate just stops where it is and stays there. And it means that every three months, no matter what, he's getting some amount of potatoes for basically no water. No water, no maintenance. Very, very easy, easy to grow crops. And he said he ran his population on potatoes for a majority of the game. And we just had a harvest stats and we got 26. 26. There were many penalties in there, but like we, we, we can't argue with them. And again, we're going to see the fertility goes up right now because nothing's been planted. So fertility naturally goes up. Planting happens. We're going to have 37. Uh, realistically, it would be about 32 if it was irrigated farms. Uh, but it's obviously not irrigated farms. It's crappy farms. And they're just going to sit there. And eventually, after three months, they'll either be kept wet and you'll get a decent crop out or they'll dry out the fertility equilibrium or the fertility of the soil will go up which will counteract the fact that they've been dry it's 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 a i wouldn't call it an exploitive a system it's um 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 definitely looking at the game mechanics and using them to your advantage yes yes i like this little idea i like this little idea i'm, I'm gonna remember this if i ever play a hard map that's extra dry and yes uh okay uh the back of the island we have all the water all the water from all the products uh all, all the excess water from all the products comes in here goes to a giant tank giant tank uh then gets fed in the next giant tank via a priority balancer so we use any excess water first we top it up with whatever water is required to then run into the farms that's it that's it that is the iron tour uh, island tour except for um this pipe and this ramp that comes up to you know more of these groundwater pumps and that sound in the background, which you'd need to wander up here and find um, this. Uh, this is his little surprise. His little surprise. Um, Fang actually sent me his map uh, about a week ago. About a week ago. And I said, very interesting. I had a look through. I, I even started writing the script for it and everything else. And, and ironing out exactly what was aware and everything else. And I said, well, if you've already played seven playthroughs, um, what's next? What's next? And I said to him, you know, obviously you haven't launched a rocket yet in this playthrough. Maybe that's what's next in this playthrough. Now, lo launch a rocket or, or maybe go all out and launch lots of rockets. Um, he then sent me his save back about a week later with this setup. What happens when you make a rocket is, or make a launch a rocket, probably more accurate, is you get one uni for the next 12 months. And therefore, if you launch a rocket every, mo every month, you could end up with 12 uni extra constantly. What Fang did is um, he went above and beyond. He has 13 rockets launched per year. So he has nine rocket assembly depots, RADs. Yes, nine RADs uh, linked up to three silos. And he just fires rockets off continuously, non-stop, to get that one uni boost. Now, they're not cheap to launch, okay? Rockets are actually quite expensive at uh, 300 steel, 30 gold, and 80 electronics, three. On top of that, every single rocket requires 160 water, and also, when this connects and gets plugged in, uh, it's also 80 hydrogen. 80 hydrogen for fuel. So he's got to constantly supply water and uh, hydrogen, also constantly supply steel and electronics and gold, and the poor trucks have to drive all the way up this hill to get there. But there's a thing when it comes to capital industry, and that is recycle. Oh, recycling. Okay, so we can see this one's going to cost us 300 steel, uh, 30 gold, and 80 electronics, 3. And this is the um, the carryall, the carryall uh, that drove the rocket out to the silo and is now driving back. And when he goes into uh, the rocket assembly depot, uh, he returns like the recycled materials um, from launching a rocket. Which, because we have a recycling edict of 90%, it means that um, we're going to get a number of resources back um i think it's actually a little bit more than 90 percent uh because we end up with 59 gold uh so that's 29 gold got returned uh 285 steel got returned and what's that 76 electronics 3 got returned uh which means the cost to launch a rocket is actually 15 steel one gold and what's that four four electronics three um Oh, don't don't forget there's also the population cost like every single one of these needs 160 people plus 500 kilowatts worth of power plus 24 teraflops so there's a lot of people up here making rockets uh also every single rocket uh launch pad needs another 30 people and it's going to need a constant supplier every month of 160 water plus also 80 hydrogen so there's a lot of materials going into actually launching the rockets and running the buildings but the actual cost for making the rockets actually relatively cheap um and the funny thing is 
is actually slightly overloading the three silos. Um, we can see this rocket's here and it's got nowhere to go because, well, there's, there's just no available silo. Uh, he's now got somewhere to go. He's got somewhere to go. Uh, it seems like you can have two rockets assigned to the same silo at the same time. Uh, no job stopped. Yep, he's waiting to have a, a free silo to be assigned to. But yeah, um, I, he could probably get up to... Well, we're down to 12. It, it, it alternates between 12 uni and 14 uni. But I think there's a chance that, that Fang could actually get up to, you know, 14, 15 uni every month or every year um, from just rocket launches if he builds another rocket solo. But yes, this has been uh, Fang's 100% sustainable island tour. It's been a pleasure to look at. If you have an island you want me to have a look at, by all means, like I said before, hit me up on Twitter, hit me up on Discord. I'm very, very much looking at, like looking at unique islands like this. At the same time, if you enjoyed this video, can you do me a favor? Can you click the like button? Hopefully the YouTube algorithm will pick it up. More Captain Ministry players will have a chance to have this video recommended to them uh, and, and have a look at... What can be done? What can be done with, you know, your eighth playthrough of the game? Anyway, with all that said, I need to end this video here. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. Do hope you've enjoyed. And I'll see you guys after this. Rocket launch. All right. Bye.